You were rock bottom, and then you realized that a change needed to be made. How did that end you up talking for a living, you know, doing a podcast, sharing your mind, sharing your thoughts, and also navigating what Gordo just shared with us about like this ever-changing world about what you can and cannot talk about? <laughs> this is a beautiful segue. Um, you know, it's it's funny. I was actually in a mushroom journey. It, funny we can talk about mushrooms, but we can't talk about other certain things. Right. I was in a mushroom journey uh, at a beach in Santa Cruz, Wilder State Park, one of my favorite places. Um, there's not a lot of people there. We, my wife and I walked down this little cove. It was a fairly deep journey, and it was after I'd been on Rogan's, and he, he recommended starting the podcast, and I was really sitting with that. And it got kind of dark. And the, this question that just come, kept coming up in my mind was what the fuck do you know? And it was like, Oh God, I don't know anything. <laughs> it was deep, <laughs> deeply humbling and um, really hard. But I, I realized I have a, I'm kind of like a Jack of all trades, you know, and, and I've, I, I've gotten so much that I've learned through books and through experts. But I, one of the things that I pride myself on is the fact that I practice everything. You know, I want to be the living embodiment of what I learn. And I think that's made, you know, uh, a difference through everything. When I was at on it, I was the office guinea pig. Like anything I was going to talk about, I was going to try on for size. And that gave me more content. That gave me more things to, to talk about. And from a personal, you know, from an N equals one standpoint. And so just continuing on that path, I continue to learn. Fighting gave me a big impetus to want to read and learn more. I read more books in my fighting career than I ever did in college and previous and since uh, retiring from fighting in 2014, that hasn't changed, you know. Um, I've always had a thirst for knowledge and, you know, having the space in my schedule to really be able to practice these things makes all the difference in the world. So I know definitively for me, and equals one, what works, what doesn't, what works best, and, and the ability to really convey that to people. Um, you know, getting more towards this current topic over the last year and a half, there's been a lot of people, especially in my field in health and wellness, people that, you know, a lot of the people that I was speaking with at Paleo FX who understand things pretty clear and understand that, you know, what we're being told, the narrative that's going around uh, at minimum raises more questions than answers at minimum, you know, but the, the more we dive deep into the rabbit hole, the, the clearer, you know, this, this really becomes and thanks to documentaries and thanks to um, people who know science and actually can look at it, you know, like I, I have friends who have like t-shirts to say science is real, you know, in Austin, <laughs> there's, there's, uh, you know, there, there's the, 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 the placards that are put in people's front yards to say black lives matter, love is love, science is real. And it just goes down that list. But something that most people forget right now is that the very nature of science is to question. The very mm -hmm. nature of science is to poke holes. This is why we have a peer review, that and obviously placebo effect. But the peer review is meant, the double blind is the placebo. The peer review is to poke holes in it and say, hey, something looks amiss with this. And certainly, I mean, you know, with the guests that I started transitioning towards on my podcast, um, all of them were active medical doctors. You know, it's not like I'm talking to a, <laughs> a chiropractor mm -hmm. who also could have very good information about these things. And they're allowed to have their opinion themselves. I was bringing medical doctors on the show and um, continuing to dive deep into the rabbit hole and, and uh, take the red pill, as they say, you know, and that's that's furthered my understanding of all this in a way that really does make sense. It's not a happy place to be, you know, for a year, it really took me down mentally and physically you know I, I didn't let it break me down all the way because i have two kids and a wife um and my wife you know carried the squad on her back for a little bit of that you know while i had to really figure out how to navigate this water and uh understand my place in it but you know some of the guests that i've had on from mickey willis to dale big tree to dr david e martin dr kirk parsley you know and jp sears of course who's been phenomenal through this really gave me the courage to want to stand up and speak. Mm -hmm. And, um, you know, I'm reading the Gulag Archipelago right now. Jordan Peterson has <laughs> been right about so much of this stuff, you know, five, six years ago, he was talking about this on Rogan's, what censorship actually looks like, where it leads. 
And uh, he called it way ahead of time, you know, because of the books that he had read. And, and reading the Gulag Archipelago is just like the single in the first chapter, they get to it. The single biggest problem that they had was that no one spoke out. That's mm -hmm. that everyone acquiesced. Everyone said, no, I'm, I'm, this is a wrongful arrest. Surely they'll figure this out once I get to jail. They'll see that I committed no crime and I'll be released. Well, 25 years goes by or gunshot to the head or torture in between that. And that's not how it worked out for quite a bit of the pop population under Lenin and Stalin. And, and unfortunately, these are the these are this is what the writing on the wall is showing us right now. And there's different names for it, as you know and your listeners know. Some people call it the Great Reset. Some people call it Agenda 2030. Some people call it uh, Build Back Better. As we've heard, is a wonderful slogan that all the powers that be like to throw around at all means. Yeah, it's, it all means new world order. I mean, it all means totalitarian control. And unfortunately, transhumanism is transhumanism is a big part of this. The man's merging uh, with AI interfaces, and that again spells more for control. So, you know, the why behind this? People say if you follow the money, it's easier to see. Um, there's an excellent documentary called Thrive and Thrive Two. Yeah. That um, you know, our buddies have done. Kyle Tierman introduced me to that. He's a good friend of mine. His stepfather, Foster Gamble, and uh, and mother made those documentaries, and they're fantastic documentaries. They really break this stuff down, um, and also do a great job of bridging into the light. You know, to to say like this is what we do. This is how we get back to sustainable living. How we take care of the planet. How we first take care of ourselves through organic and biodynamic farming. And, um, you know, all the principles of Paul Check, the last four doctors you'll ever need, is a fantastic ebook that's very short for people to understand. Like, if you live by the principles of these four doctors, Dr. Movement, Dr. Quiet, Dr. Diet, and Dr. Happiness, you don't need to see a doctor. Like, you, you're good. Those are your four doctors. Adequate sleep and meditation for Dr. Quiet, organic food and clean water for Dr. Diet, and uh, whatever your movement practices from yoga to running to lifting weights to martial arts any of these things that's your doctor movement dance um and then doctor happiness what is your dream what are you building and working towards how are you filling your cup each day and and uh inching towards your path and your dreams when you've got all those ducks in a row you have perfect health and i could say like between me my wife and our two kids we are completely healthy my kids have never had a jab completely healthy. And I've read, I can give you a laundry list of references why we chose to do that from books like Dissolving Illusions by medical doctor Suzanne Humphreys to the Nourishing Traditions book of Baby and Child Care by Dr. Thomas Cowan and Sally Fallon, who runs the Weston A. Price Foundation in New York City. Uh, the list goes on and on. But, you know, the point is that understanding health is fundamentally our right and our responsibility is a different way to view it than I expect, you know, this sick care system to take care of me and the next invention is going to get me, uh, give me my get out of jail card for not taking care of myself. That's not how it works. Health doesn't come in a jab. It doesn't come in a pill. And I've been on both sides of the fence with that. You know, I've had, <laughs> I've had the pills. I've lived that experience and I've lived this experience and it's a whole different world. Make sure you all head over to benjosephstewart.com become a member. You'll have access to the growing library of deeper dives where I talk about all the stuff that I really can't talk about on YouTube. Make sure you get involved in the Discord chat. That's where a lot of the conversation is happening, talking about new theories, being able to interweave into the greater conversation that is how we awaken infinity. That's our highest potential. And I just want to remind you, you are the most powerful technology ever known to creation. Wield it like an artist with a conscience.